Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Pat Hickey. Uh, I'm the reason you're here. Uh, and I'm here to share my book uh, to shamelessly self-promote it tonight, read some things, take your questions and answers, and talk a little bit about uh, this here Tahoe boy. Um, let me begin in the beginning and uh, read you just the uh, first paragraph. And maybe that's enough. It kind of is all contained here, supposedly. Finding happiness is damn hard to do. Even growing up in a picture-perfect paradise like Lake Tahoe, it wasn't easy. Friends of mine got lost looking for it in America's year-round blue playground. Many went elsewhere sojourning for their peace. I did too before I came back to find mine back home. Uh, maybe that's uh, really all that needs to be read, but I'll, I'll find some other things. Um, writing the book and about Tahoe, Tahoe is a, a, a metaphor, if you will, uh, like Kansas, in a way, was to Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, that there was no place for her like home. And uh, for anyone who was fortunate enough, like I was, to grow up in Lake Tahoe, uh, the place Mark Twain, of course, called the fairest place, uh, to paraphrase on God's green earth. Uh, very, very fortunate to have grown up here. But Tahoe, more than a place uh, for me, was a metaphor for the happiness that I have sought in my life, like each and every one of us here. Um, Tahoe, uh, the, the book, well, let me, let me give you a little background of the family. I have here tonight my 96-year-old father. Uh, and let me read you a little bit about uh, the family that were early pioneers uh, in the Tahoe area. Find it here momentarily. Well, I had these marks so that this was supposed to work. Um, but we'll come back to it. Um, okay, let, let, let's forget that for the moment. Um, one of the reasons why I, I wrote this book uh, about my life was uh, that nearing 60, I happened to be married to an Asian wife that you'll learn about uh, here briefly, uh, who I'm the recipient of an arranged marriage with her, so that's uh, something different. But uh, in Asian culture and thinking, the year 60 represents the completion of a cycle and the beginning of the next phase of your life. I'm nearing that. For me, it was special to write about what had happened in my life up until that point uh, of reaching 60 and uh, the things that it meant to me. I guess one, one of the, the, the things that happened to me growing up at the lake, I had an experience on a Good Friday in St. Teresa's Parish where I was a member as, as a Catholic young person. And I had an experience uh, on a Good Friday being an altar boy of walking around the stages or the, the path of the, the cross, as it's called. And, and I really wondered, you know, why uh, Jesus had to die. Or I guess at that time the 60s song of Dion's came up uh, where he said, why did the good all die young? Abraham, Martin, and John later. Bobby Kennedy was added to that. I kind of wondered at the time maybe Jesus should have been added as well. That led me into other thoughts that day, and I, I sat there in the pew of my church as a 16-year-old, and I wondered, what would happen when I died? Who, who would come uh, to remember me? And more than that, I thought, what would I say to those, uh, or had I said the things to those uh, that I loved and cared for uh, in my life? And I concluded I never had. So I guess in one way, writing the book Tahoe Boy was an opportunity to say thanks for all those people that cared for me, that meant something uh, in my life. And uh, writing a book like this uh, gave me an opportunity uh, to do just that. Um, let me, again, read just a little bit about the family, uh, the Hickeys that came to the Carson Valley in the 1800s. Uh, from all accounts, Grandpa Pat was an enterprising cuss not foolish enough to remain a dirt-poor dirt Irish farmer, neither was he wise enough to become a land-rich American rancher. Instead, Pat harvested ice out of brother-in-law Wallace Park's frozen pond. 
Uh, you've seen it on television, the pond that is. It's the one NBA legend Charles Barkley slices his tee shots into every summer during the Edgewood Tahoe Celebrity Golf Classic. Classic. That water hazard holds the distinction of being the only place I know of that both Sir Charles and my grandfather cursed at incessantly. Another tale of the family's land has Mark Twain penning parts of roughing it over at Edgewood, or Friday Station as it was known then. It served as a Pony Express station for the likes of Snowshoe Thompson and his beleaguered mail carriers, as well as a place for Grandpa Pat to get a backdoor plate of Irish stew from Sister Maggie Park. One more word about to my grandfather. I said here, no one can say for sure that Eugene O'Neill used my grandfather as the model for his 1939 hickey of the Iceman Cometh, but he did resemble the play's central character in two important ways. Pat loved to talk and he loved to drink, not necessarily in that order. Some of my Irish relatives are certainly giggling and, and resonating with that one. Uh, later in life, I went away to boarding school in Berkeley in the 60s, which uh, was, it was a wild place to, to send a guy like me in the middle of the 60s. Uh, write a little bit about boarding school. I said in uh, 64, I went away to boarding school at St. Mary's College High School in Berkeley. A number of Tahoe parents sent their firstborn males there to save them from the scourge of public education. It was too early for parents to know that sacrilegious singers like Madonna were a product of Catholic high school and not the moral panacea they presumed. The school was all boys all the time, which meant there was constant thought about imaginary girls. Well, other things that happen in a boarding school, it makes you long for a lot of things you don't have, having a car with female contact of any time, any kind. Once a year, the proper young ladies of nearby St. Joseph's School would grace St. Mary's smelly gym with their perfumed presence. We'd act as if it was no big deal, but secretly each freshman boarder was after shaving his brains out in nervous anticipation of a would-be dance encounter with someone other than their 24-7 male companion. So uh, that, that's boarding school, and, and that led into other things. Um, we came back, or I came back, with all the kids from Tahoe. Brendan Riley here remembers that the Tahoe boys were always getting fights at the American Legion Hall with the Valley boys, or Vallejo boys, like Gordon, our Associated Press Bureau chief here, who came up and probably tangled with a few of the guys back in the day. So uh, we weren't invited to come back to St. Mary's. I returned to South Tahoe. And I'm only going to read you two more parts, and then we'll have a little discussion. But uh, this is about life at South Tahoe High and some of our extracurricular activities. Uh, spring baseball at South Tahoe High was more like a combination of ice hockey and mud wrestling than the national pastime. Uh, for early season practices, the team would head to the desert east of Carson City. Uh, the rival dust, Dayton Dust Devils, Mike, uh, would lend us their dryer diamond for weekend play. One day, guys brought along their 22 rifles along for the ride, and after the day's scrimmage, we piled into the back of George Doney's pickup, ostensibly to go jackrabbit hunting. But no one before or after the great Daniel Boone has ever managed to shoot a jackrabbit with anything other than a shotgun. So you shouldn't be surprised that anyone in our bunny safari didn't produce uh, the intended results. Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you view such matters, there were other nearby adventures in the desert waiting to befall us. One of the senior outfielders suggested a truth or dare session over at the Moonlight Ranch. Uh, for those, well, I'll skip about Nevada's brothel industry. Most of you already know about uh, Nevada's second most famous vice. But avoiding eye contact and making poor attempts at man humor, most of the team watched as a few puffed up young stallions turned over their dollars to the madam inside that trailer of iniquity. Names have been forgotten to protect the innocence that was lost. Uh, for the question and answer session, let me repeat that. Names have been forgotten to protect the innocence that was lost. One boy, minus bravado, confessed he kept his socks on during the mostly sordid affair. A metaphor for purity now breached. His white socks were a remnant of the decency that even a $10 lay couldn't remove. All right, enough of that. <laughs> I guess this is a tell-all book. Maybe I, I should tell that I'm running for office and I've gotten everything out there now. I'm, I'm going to run for re-election again. 
The problem is, as a Republican, I, I'd have to have an affair, I guess, to run these days. And I love my wife much too deeply. Uh, I don't know what's happening to the Republicans. Must be something in the water.